சூரத்து சையதின <laughs> ஹைதரிய <laughs> وآثار الباقرية ومعاصر الصادقية وعلوم الخادمية وحجج ربوية وجود التقوية والنقاوة النقوية والعيبة العسكرية والغيبة الإلهية والقائمة بالحق اللهم عجل وليك الفرج رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي عمري واهل البقتة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتاب الكريم ومحكم كتاب المجيد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقول للناس حسناء صلوات first chapter of the holy quran by the name of surah al-luqman has not been named after a prophet a messenger nor an infallible rather the surah has been named after one of the most wisest of men luqman is regarded to be one of the most noble the most wisest of men having a lot of intellect and intelligence it is said to have said that luqman was an ethiopian slave who in some traditions was was either a chef or according to one of the tradition was a carpenter one day luqman's master calls luqman forward and he says luqman i would like you to slaughter a goat and from it bring forth two most pleasant and two most delicious things and present it to me so luqman slaughtered the goat and from the goat presented the tongue and the heart The master looked at what Luqman had to offer and he said this is the most pleasant thing you could find you couldn't find anything else Luqman said no he said very well a few moments passed by and then the master again called Luqman and he said Luqman i would now like you to slaughter a goat but this time i would like you to throw away the most despicable the most hated of things so Luqman did as he was asked and he slaughtered the goat and this time to his surprise he threw away the goat the tongue and the heart of the goat the master looked at this and he called luqman over and he noted he said luqman when i asked you to bring forth the two most pleasant things from the goat you brought forth the tongue and the heart but when i asked you to throw away the most hated thing the most malicious thing you threw away the tongue and the heart why is this so now look at what luqman had to respond and his answer is worth noting Luqman responded he said when a person is good when a person is pleasant then there is no two more things that are better than the tongue and the heart however when a person is evil is malicious his actions are wicked then there is no two more hated things other than this tongue and this heart so what luqman the wise is trying to say from this anecdote that we have is no matter where we get to life if we are able to use our tongue properly if we are able to use our heart properly then they will be one of the best of parts of the body however if we for example use our tongue in the wrong way then they can be one of the worst parts of the body that we may have 
Therefore, the topic of discussion that I have decided to talk, title tonight's Majalis lecture and discussion is titled Language. Gentle and abusive words. And inshallah, in this discussion, we will look into many types of language in and bring this down into abusiveness and um, and gentleness. And from it, we will look into some scientific experiments as well as some anecdotes from the traditions, from the ahadith, and from the lives of our beloved Ahlul Bayt. The pleasure of the Holy Quran, the pleasure of the verse that I had to recite before you of the Holy Quran is a verse from the second chapter of the Holy Quran, Surah Al Baqarah, verse number 83. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the high has stated وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna And speak to the people gently In reference to this ayat when Imam Baqir alayhi salam was asked Imam Baqir said Speak to the people the best of which you would like to be spoken about yourself It is clear that we as individuals always like positivity We always like to hear good things from others over here, Imam alayhi salam is giving a beautiful principle. Whenever you speak, only speak that which you would in turn like to hear for yourself. Let us now go to a tradition from our beloved Imam. Mine and your Mawla, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amirul Mu'mineen, salawatullahi wa salamahu alayhi. Is encouraging individuals, is encouraging me and you to talk. Why? Because it is clear whenever a person talks, his real self, whatever is hidden, manifests itself. Here, Imam Ali salam has quoted to have said, Takalamu to Rafu, speak so that you may be known. Imam Ali salam is encouraging, speak so that people may recognize for who we are and what is inside us. And then he continues this hadith and he says, For indeed, if you speak, your real self, a man is hidden under his tongue. Now, many a times we may have temperaments, we may have thoughts, we may have ideas, we may have things in our minds which is well and hidden, well and truly hidden. However, from this hadith, what Imam Ali salam is trying to say is that whenever a person speaks and he utters a few words, whatever is in his mind, whatever is in his temperament reveals itself. So long as the person is quiet, his weaknesses as well as accomplishments and success is hidden. But as soon as he speaks, he, his real self is now manifested. And now this is what Imam Ali is saying as he is encouraging us talk so that people in the society may know you. But beware for whatever you talk, you will be known as who you, in, who you really are. Now, as I mentioned, I would like to concentrate into two facets of this topic. One is abusiveness and one is gentle words. And although the latter part of this discussion will focus on the gentle words and the use of and the importance of using noble words, I would first like to continue this discussion in discussing the profanity and abusive and offensive language. Now, we all know we, time and time again we have heard that using bad language, using swear words, using profanity, abusive, rude, swear language is something that is looked down upon. However, before I'm able to present the ahadith, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to say, what the Holy Prophet has to say, let me first start this category of the discussion through a very in interesting experiment. One university in Utah, Brigham Young University, Involved a study which involved 223 middle schoolers from the state of Missouri from Missouri Now the researchers here wanted to see the link between those people that You that have exposure to bad language from for example the media more specifically to video games and TV And they wanted to see how much link of that brings forth um, they themselves using swear words, they themselves using bad words and they wanted to see the third link from those using bad words to aggression that they show to people. And they measured aggression through two units. For the first level of aggression was physical aggression. For example, they asked and observed and asked parents and noted through their interviews of physical aggression such as punching, kicking or hitting. And the second level of aggression they wanted to measure was relational aggression, for example, causing reputational damage to someone through gossiping. So what, the, what these researchers wanted to do is wanted to see the link 
between exposure to bad language from media and how that comes across to them themselves using bad language and how bad language is used is linked to aggressive behavior now using statistical models what they found is those individuals those kids those middle schoolers those children who viewed a lot of media or played those games which had a lot of bad language and profanity in it they in turn used bad language themselves and the more bad language they themselves used the more aggressive they got towards people that's physically so that's hitting punching and kicking people but also relationally as in they wanted to cause reputational damage to people through gossiping and through backbiting behind themselves the lead researcher sarah m coin who is a uni- who is a professor at the brigham young university in family life she states that from profanity to aggressive behavior the correlation the link is extremely strong so which is why there is no doubt that that the holy prophet has said that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates those individuals that use bad language and use profanity and abusiveness from this small experiment we can see already that every time we are exposed to bad language we in turn become more aggressive towards our people towards our friends family and colleagues and community at large which is why now let us move forward and take this discussion forward into an anecdote i would like to share with you which involved the life of the holy prophet one day the holy prophet was seated in his gathering and in that gathering was in that gathering present was abu bakr one day an individual comes forward to that gathering and starts reviling abu bakr and he starts using abusive language and swear words and profanity and rude words at that time abu bakr restrained himself and waited as soon as the outburst of that individual who was um, abusing abu bakr finished abu bakr now in order to defend himself also began using the same type of language to him and he started abusing him as soon as abu bakr started using foul language the holy prophet himself stood up from where he was seated and he started moving away from that gathering and he distanced himself from it whilst he was distancing himself from that gathering he noted and he said that for as long as the person was abusing abu bakr and whilst abu bakr was quiet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent down an angel that was defending him on his behalf however as soon as abu bakr started abusing that individual the angel of god moved away and his place was taken by shaitan and the holy prophet said that i am not of those individuals that is seated in a gathering which is joined by shaitan such a beautiful anecdote time and time again we have heard that we need to be polite we need to stop using abusive language if for example the scientific experiment hasn't yet motivated us to stop using abusive language then clearly here the holy prophet is saying stop it because shaitan is also a participant in the discussion that you are having and any action where shaitan is involved is an action that the holy prophet is not involved in and any action where the holy prophet is not involved in is an action which is not blessed is an action which is not looked well upon now a question arises we being for for example living in the society how should we now respond to individuals who start abusing us if for example profanity is frowned upon how then can we respond to those individuals we living in society we shouldn't be responding to people as muhammad or ali or hassan shabbir etc but rather we need to be responding to such individuals as the followers of imam hassan alayhi salam as the followers of the ahlul bayt alayhi salam one day one day it is a very beautiful anecdote which i'm sure my elders know better than i do but this is from my younger brothers and younger sisters one day as we all know syria when muavia was the leader of the apparent muslim khilafat at that time he would spread a lot of propaganda against imam ali alayhi salam and his children and the family so one day an individual from sham from damish comes forth to madin and as soon as he sees imam hasan alayhi salam he starts abusing him and he starts using the most worst of languages imam hasan alayhi salam didn't respond to him however he waited and then when the person finished whatever he wanted to speak imam hasan alayhi salam then said that 
you seem to be a new person in the area. You seem that you don't know the status of the Holy Prophet and all statuses. Maybe people have explained it all incorrectly to you. However, if, for example, you need a hose, let me know a hose can be provided. If you need a roof over your head, let me know a roof shelter can be provided. If you are hungry, then food can be provided. If you need clothes, then I can provide clothes for you. If you need religious guidance, then that too can be provided. Why don't you become my guest for as long as you wish for that is better than what you are doing right now. The person, the individual who had heard the worst of things about Imam Ali and Imam Hassan salam, was quite taken aback and was surprised and he reflected for a moment. And then he said, when I first came from Sham, there were no two more people that I hated the most, being yourself and your father. But now, having left your company, there are no two more people that I love as much as I love you and your father. Such a quick turn around of his status of mind. Imam, Imam Hassan salam, if he wanted, he could have easily responded to the individual which befitted his response. However, him being the Imam, him having the sublime of morals, restrained himself and waited for that individual to finish and provided him the best of words and the gentle of words. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 44 states, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُوا أَوْ يَخْشَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, He says, and speak to him with gentle speech that perhaps he may be reminded or fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this verse was revealed in the context for the people of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. For example, when Prophet Musa alayhi salam was given prophet to the messengership, he was asked now go to Pharaoh and deliver the message that has been brought to you. If we look at the verse beforehand in, chapter, in verse number 43, Allah says, go you both unto Pharaoh. Verily he has transgressed the bounds. Over here, if we look into this Verses of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is training Prophet Musa. Firstly, he is commanding him, go, enjoin good and forbid evil, go, do Amr bil ma'roof and forbid any evil, nahi anil munkar. However, he is training Prophet Musa, however, when you go to Fir'aun, however much of an oppressive person he is, however much of a tyrannical ruler that is, speak to him gently so that he may be reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, we may, for example, be live in a society where people are abusive to us. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, no matter how abusive an individual is to you, no matter how tyrannical that person is to you, even if he may be Pharaoh himself living in Egypt, still speak softly to him, speak kindly to him so that he may change his ways. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another word is saying, that if you go and you speak to him abusively, then there is little chance for him to change. If you want to make an impact, then always speak gently, for that's where the strength lies. In another tradition, for example, the Holy Prophet is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, the third chapter, Surah Ali Imran, verse number 159, he says to the Holy Prophet, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةَ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فُضًّا غَلِيذًا قَلْبِي لَا نُفَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Holy Prophet It is thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy that you are gentle to them. Had you been rough, had you been hard-hearted to them, then surely they would have scattered away from you. This verse was revealed at the time of the Battle of Uhud. As we all know, Battle of Uhud was a battle where a lot of people retreated from the battle and a lot of people left, ran away from the battle. However, when the battle ended and when the Muslims at that time had the military had the military defeat, many people were now burning in the regret and were very remorseful and sad. And they had gathered in groups and were coming to the Holy Prophet asking for forgiveness. At that time, the Holy Prophet forgave them and he was really lenient to them. He was very soft-hearted. Many a point, many a lessons can be derived from this beautiful ayat. One of the first lessons that we can derive from this ayat is that being lenient, being gentle to people, being soft-hearted is in fact a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
You see, unfortunately, we live in a society where, for example, in our school, in our colleges, community, or even workplace, if someone is abusive to us, if we don't respond to them with the same abusive nature, a lot of people may think that the individual is quite weak, he's quite coward, he perhaps doesn't know how to take that um, profanity. And until and unless the person, he himself, responds to that person with the same level of abusiveness, he isn't taken as seriously in the society. However, unfortunately here, the Holy Quran is saying, no, this is not so. If you see, if you are gentle to people, then in fact it is a strength because it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been merciful to you and it is a blessing that you should be proud of. It is actually a strength of being able to hold yourself in face of profanity, in face of abusiveness. The second lesson that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving is that of leadership. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, had you been hard-hearted, people would have scattered from you. One main important for leadership, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying for fruitful leadership, is to have gentle words, is to have good words. And now trying to take this discussion forward and, and taking it forward into the gentle words, let me now share with you another very beautiful experiment that took place only a few years ago. Dr. Masaru Emoto. Dr. Masaru Emoto is a Japanese scientist. What he says is, he says that words, your thoughts, your intentions, for example, can change the molecular structure of water. If, for example, you think of positive things, the energy that is emitted from your mind and the words that are emitted from your mouth actually have a positive impact on water and can have a negative impact on water. And given that humans are made 70% of water, he wanted to try and prove what good thoughts and bad thoughts can be done to humans. So what he did, he got some rice together because rice is made with water, it's boiled with water. And his experiment, experiment lasted for 30 days. On the container, he wrote, one of the containers of rice, he wrote, thank you. And another container, he wrote, you fool. And he placed the containers in the school and he told the school kids, every day when you pass, just say thank you and say you fool for 30 days. Now, many, many such experiments have been conducted at home. Me and my brothers have also conducted a similar experiment approximately two and a half years ago. And if you'd like to, re if you'd wish to see photos or messages or the description, I'm more than happy to share these with you. So now many experiments of such as these have been taken. So Dr. Emoto's experiment lasted for 30 days and our experiment at home lasted for 14 days. In our container, we had positive words such as thank you, well done, amazing, fabulous, fantastic. And in the other um, container of boiled rice, we had written disgusting, ugly, evil, wicked, bad. So now after 30 days of Dr. Emoto's experiment and after 14 days of our own experiment at home, the results were quite clear. That rice, which was, which had negative energy emitted to it, negative and bad words emitted to it, had deteriorated completely and had darkened and blackened in color, full of fungus and full of mold and rot. However, the other container where positive energy was emitted, it had deteriorated at a much slower pace. Of course, its rice is going to go bad, but you could see the color differences and you could see the mold very clearly. Now, of course, this study is thought to be purely anecdotal and more scientific. Um, scholarly articles need to be published and more research needs to be done on this. However, if we just take a pause and just take a moment on what positive words and what positive language and thoughts can do to, walk, to rice, which was made of water, just imagine what these same words and intentions can do to an individual. For example, we have kids raising in our home. If, for example, we encourage them with positive words, just imagine what nature they can be brought up with. Or, or just imagine if we always put them down and if we always say, no, you haven't done this right. No, that's not correct. No, you're this, you're that, you're that. Now, just imagine, given that the human body is made 70% of water, what impact that can have on the molecular structure of water. And therefore, before presenting a conclusion, Quickly summarizing in what we've discussed today in tonight's lecture titled Language, Positive and Negative Words, we started our discussion of, with discussing the story of Luqman. We moved forward to the hadith of Imam Ali alayhi salam saying that we need to know within the society through 
our words and we moved and slowly slowly moved on to negative words of the scientific experiments and that of the anecdotes from the holy prophet moving on to imam hassan's anecdote and we ended this discussion with positive words of this scientific experiment now in order to bring this discussion into a conclusion and to bring all the threads together i would like to leave with you a beautiful line of quote by ian mclaren ian he says be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a difficult battle. You see, as individuals, we are acutely aware and intensely aware of all the difficulties that we are fighting and we are facing. However, Ian says, be kind, for you do not know that another person is also finding a, facing a difficult battle. And sometimes a smile or a positive word can be the most positive and can be the best of things they have ever heard on that day. And we need to try and follow the principle and the philosophy of Imam Bakr where he says, speak the best of which that you would like to be spoken about yourself. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Azizo, Azadarane Imam Muslim Karbala, or Samiin Muhtaram, Ayam Azam, Jate Jate, Hame ye Zururi Pegam Beke Gayahe, Ke Aj Ham is Dormij Zinda Hena. اگر جناب فاطمہ کی دعا نہ ہوتی تو ہم سانس بھی نہیں لے سکتے اگر جناب فاطمہ زہرا کی دعا نہ ہوتی تو ہم یہاں زندہ ہم یہاں باقی نہیں ہوتے کیوں جب واقع کربلا جناب زہرا کو سنایا گیا تو رسول خدا فرماتے چلے جا رہے تھے اور فاطمہ اشکبار ہو کے روتی جا رہی تھی ایک مرتبہ جناب فاطمہ نے رسول اللہ سے یہ نہیں پوچھا بابا میرے حسین کو کون بچائے گا ہمیں روایت بہت ہی مشہور ہے بلکہ فرمایا بابا میرے حسین پر کون روئے گا تو رسول اللہ اس وقت فرماتے ہیں بیٹی زہرہ فکر نہ کرنا خدا ایک ایسی قوم کو پیدا کرے گا کہ جس کے بچے حسین کے بچوں پر روئیں گے کہ جن کے جوان حسین کے جوانوں پر روئیں گے کہ جن کے عورتیں حسین کی عورتوں پر روئیں گے اور جن کے ضعیف حسین کے ضعیفوں پر روئیں گے اس وقت جناب فاطمہ نے کہا کہ میں جنت میں نہیں جاؤں گی جب تک میں ہر ازادار کو جنت میں نہ لے جاؤں اور پھر جناب فاطمہ نے ہاتھ بلند کر کر دعا فرمایا بابا پالنے والے خدایا تو ان ازادار کو سلامت رکھ کیوں کیونکہ فاطمہ کی دعا ہے ایام ازا ہمیں یہ ضروری پیغام دے کے جا رہا ہے کہ زندگی ہی دعا ہے اور دعا ہی زندگی ہے اگر ہم اس زندگی میں دعا کو فراموش کر دیں تو یہ زندگی بیکار ہوتی ہے اس زندگی کا کچھ فائدہ نہیں ہوتا اب سوال یہ پیدا ہوتا ہے کہ ہم اس زندگی میں سب سے کوسی اہم ترین اور ضروری دعا ہے جو ہمیں مانگنی چاہیے آیا ہمیں اچھے ریزلس ملیں اچھا کام ملے گھر برا ہو گاری اچھی ہو یا پھر کچھ اور سب سے بہترین دعا جو انسان کو مانگنا چاہیے وہ ہے ایمان کی سلامتی انسان اس دور میں دنیا میں آتا ہے تو تین سٹیجز سے گزرتا ہے پہلا ایمان کے ساتھ آیا یا نہیں آیا اور دوسرا سٹیج ہوتا ہے ایمان کی زندگی اس دور میں ایمان سے رہ رہا ہے یا نہیں رہ رہا الحمدللہ ہم اس دور میں اس زندگی میں ایمان کے ساتھ رہ رہے ہیں لیکن کیا گیرنٹی ہے کہ ہم اس دنیا سے جب جائیں گے ایمان کے ساتھ جائیں گے اس دنیا میں سب سے ضروری چیز کیا ہے مال اور مال کی حفاظت انسان کیا کرتا ہے تجوری میں رکھتا ہے لوگوں کے سامنے نہیں لاتا بہت ہی اپنے پاس رکھتا ہے مال سے زیادہ قیمتی چیز ہوتی ہے جان فور اگزامپل اگر سرا سا بیمار ہو گیا انسان تو مال قربان کر کے انسان ڈاکٹر کے پاس چلے جاتا ہے دوائیں خرید لیتا ہے اور اگر حالت ایسی ہو تو انسان بوڈی گارڈ بھی رکھ لیتا ہے مال اور جان سے زیادہ قیمتی چیز کیا ہے اولاد ہر وقت باپ ماں اولادوں سے نصیحت کرتی رہتی ہے بیٹا یہاں مت جانا بیٹی وہاں مت جانا کیوں کیونکہ اولاد ضروری ہوتی ہے اب وہ چیز کیا ہے جو مال سے بھی زیادہ ضروری ہے جان سے بھی زیادہ ضروری ہے اور اولاد سے بھی زیادہ ضروری ہے وہ یہ ہے جو ایمان ہے جو ہر مومن کہتا رہتا ہے وقت پر آ تو مال قربان کر دوں گا وقت پر آ تو جان قربان کر دوں گا وقت پر آ تو اولاد قربان کر دوں گا تو ہمیں یہ سوال پوچھنا چاہیے کہ ہم نے اس ایمان کو بچانے کے لیے کیا اسلحہ تیار کیا ہے کیونکہ شیطان تو یہاں تیار ہے ہمارے ایمان کو اگوا کرنے کے لیے ڈسٹروئی کرنے کے لیے لیکن ہم نے کیا تیاری کی ہے اسی لیے آج چونکہ جمعہ رات ہے ہمیں ہر وقت ایمان کی سلامتی کی 
दुआ करनी चाहिए एक सहाबी था इमाम रज, अली रजा के दौर का वो सहाबी ने हमारे बारहवें इमाम इमाम जमाना का दौर भी देखा उसकी उम्र 117 साल की हो चुकी थी और उसकी आंखों की बिनाई जा चुकी थी उस इंसान का ईमान उस दर्जे पे था कि वो इमाम जमाना से खत एक्सचेंज करता था एक मरतबा जब इमाम जमाना ने उसे खत भेजा तो वो एक इंसान को कहता है भाई इस खत को तो पढ़ दो मुझे देखने देखना है कि इमाम ने मेरे लिए क्या लिखा है तो वो इंसान खत पढ़ते 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 रुक गया तो साहबी घबरा गया कहा क्या मौला मेरे से नाराज है प्लीज आगे बढ़ो तो वो इंसान कहता है नहीं मौला नाराज नहीं है बल्कि कहते हैं तुम इस दुनिया से रहलत कर जाओगे तुम्हारी मौत अन करीब है तो इंसान वो सहाबी फिक्रमंद हो गया ये नहीं कि मैं मरने वाला हूं बल्कि पहा कि ईमान से जरा पूछो कि मैं इस दुनिया से जब जाऊंगा क्या ईमान की सलामती से जाऊंगा या नहीं इतना बड़ा सहाबी उसकी भी ये फिक्र है कि मैं इस दुनिया से ईमान के साथ जाऊंगा या नहीं तो ऐसे लोगों को इमाम एडवांस में जवाब देते हैं खत के साथ साथ कफन भी भेजा था इस बात की दलील थी कि इस दुनिया से वो इंसान वो सहाबी ईमान के साथ जाएगा अजीजो ये बात तो तय है कि ईमान रसूल की सोहबत में उठने से बैठने से सोने से जागने से साबित नहीं होता ईमान कैसे साबित होता है रसूलुल्लाह ने फरमाया या अली हो बुका ईमान वो बुखुका कुफर व निफाक ए अली तेरी मोहब्बत तेरा हुब ईमान है और तेरा बुग्ज कुफर व निफाक है मुराद हुब अली से वसूल होती है मुराद हुब अली से वसूल होती है अली के सदके से दुआ कबूल होती है अली के जिक्र से खुश होते हैं मुहिब मुनाफिकों की तबियत मलूल होती है अजीजो अजादारो आ गया मैं अपनी मंजिल पर दुनिया का बच्चा बच्चा ये जानता है कि मौला हुसैन अलैहिस्सलाम का अशरा फकत दस दिन का होता है मगर अल्लाह जाने सानी जहरा आकाजादी शहजादी जैनब का अशरा कब खत्म होगा अजादारो ग्यारह मुहर्रम का जो दिन था ना कयामत का दिन था कोई मामूली दिन न था जनाब फिजा कहती है कि जब ग्यारह मुहर्रम आई ना तो मुझे अली बहुत याद आए लोगों ने पूछा फिजा ग्यारह मुहर्रम को अली याद क्यों आए फिजा ने कहा जब जैनब बहुत छोटी सी थी ना तो हर वक्त मेरे गोद में रहा करती थी कभी मेरी गोद से नहीं उतरती थी तो मौला अली फरमाते थे फिजा जैनब को पैदल चलने की आदत डाल मुझे मौला का जुमला समझ में नहीं आता था मगर हाय जब ग्यारह मुहर्रम आई तो जैनब को इतना पैदल चलाया गया कि पाव में छाले पड़ गए अजादारो वो जैनब जो अपने सवारी से ऐसे घिरे थी जैसे अब्बास घिरे थे अब्बास के हाथ तो कट चुके थे मगर हाय जैनब के हाथ पसे पुष्ट बंदे थे अजादारो ग्यारह मुहर्रम का दिन कोई मामूली दिन न था जालिमीनों ने एक मर्तबा सरों को गिनना शुरू किया एक शकी आगे बढ़ता है उम्र साद से कहा एक सर कम है मैंने असरे आशूर देखा था हुसैन पुश्ते खैमा एक मासूम से बच्चे को घार दिए थे दो सौ ने जबरदार तैयार होते हैं और करबला की जमीन पर घारते चले जा रहे हैं एक मरतबा सकीना चीख कर पुकारी पुपी अम्मा मेरे असगर की खैर एक मरतबा एक शकी ने अब जो अपना नेजा घारा असगर का सर नहीं पूरा असगर निकल आया सकीना दोबारा पुपी अम्मा के पास गई पुपी अम्मा हर बार जब शहीद होता है हर कोई शहीद होता है तो एक मरतबा शहीद होता है लेकिन आए मेरा शीश महा जो दो बार शहीद हुआ अजादारो अशकियों ने जालिमीनों ने एक मरतबा सरों को नेजों के ऊपर बुलंद किया सब सर नो कहा नेजों के ऊपर हुसैन का सर नो के नेजा पर कासिम का सर नो के नेजा पर अकबर का सर नो के नेजा पर 
अजहर का सर नोके नेजा पर एक मर्तबा आबिदे बीमार को बुलाया हाथों में हथकरिया पाओ में जंजीरे और गले में खारदार तो अजादारो आप तो जानते है दुनिया के तोक के कांटे बाहर को होते हैं असीर को लाया जाता है तोक को खोला जाता है असीर की गर्दन में रखा जाता है और तोक ताले से बंद किया जाता है मगर हाय मेरे इराबिदे बीमार जिसके तोक के कांटे अंदर को थे और तोक को खोला न गया था बल्कि सर से गर्दन तक उतारा गया था आ मेरे बीमार इमाम के चेहरे की खैर अजादारो वो ही नहीं शहजादी जैनब का साथ भी अम्मा का साथ रसूल की नवासियों का साथ सर बरहना एक मरतबा जैनब ने कहा हम जाएंगे लेकिन आखिरी मरतबा हम हुसैन को देखना चाहते हैं हुक्म हुआ कि इनको आखिरी मरतबा लाशों का तवाफ कर दिया जाए एक मरतबा आबिद बीमार खुदा किसी बच्चे को यह मंजर न दिखाए एक मरतबा आबिद बीमार अपने पापा की पामाल शुदा लाश को देखते हैं फसत बड़ी निगाह से देखते हैं कहते हैं पुफी अम्मा देखिए मेरे बाबा का क्या हाल हो गया जैनब एक मर्तबा हुसैन के लाश पर बैठ जाती है हाथों को बुलंद कर कहती है अल्लाह तकबल हाजल कुर्बान अल्लाह तकबल मिन्ना हाजल कुर्बान पालने वाले जैनब की इस कुर्बानी को कबूल फरमाचुल्लामी इन्ना इन्ना हुसैन या हुसैन